and tonight we are going to have 12 artists competing. And this, let's see here, once they compete here, the winners will move on to local, national, and then world championships of art battles. everyone and welcome to Art Battle in Los Angeles. We are here starting round number one. We have six absolutely incredible artists and they have 20 minutes only on the clock. Uh, we have just begun. My name is Morgan Booth and I'm here with Dean Isaacowski who is an incredible local artist, in LA, uh, a dark artist and also the host of Drawing from Experience podcast, Station. Hi, Morgan. How are you? I'm so excited to be here for the return of Art Battle Los Angeles. Right? And these guys are cooking already. They're going. Oh my gosh. The, uh, the artist lineup tonight is phenomenal. I'm so excited to see what everybody gets. 
yeah, I, I'm stoked. And I personally know some of these artists. Uh, I already love some seeing some of this uh, dark art being sketched out on these canvases um, and trying to see basically where all of these artists are starting out for such a short span of time to uh, create a painting from. Oh, and already some interesting start here from Anna Sutton. Uh, you and I were talking a little bit about battle strategy and how to start off the ideal art battle painting. And it looks like Anna may have overheard us and is uh, <laughs> starting off with a toned out canvas. Yeah, loving it. And, and I, you know, everybody approaches everything differently. Some of these artists have a reference image. Uh, Rick seems to just be going off the dome here. And, um, you know, Rick's style actually, he is a dark artist, but he uses all these bright colors, bright, intense colors and stuff to create his work. So it's going to be really interesting to see um, his come together. Yeah, I'm already like enamored with uh, the technique that he's got going on here. We've got lots of intuitive brushwork happening with that gorgeous blue. Yeah. And uh, Michelle here. Oh, she, she's already going in with some careful line work, which to me is crazy. Because uh, <laughs> the way that I would approach it is just like, you know, covering the canvas with as much color or background color as possible, and then going in towards the end with it. But she's going in right away with some careful and delicate line work. And Michelle is no stranger to the EB easel either. She has actually been painting with our Battle LA since 2019, and she has been a multiple time uh, finalist. So I've seen her paint a few times. And usually she goes really colorful, so uh, a bit of a curveball seeing all of this monochrome from her. But again, we're only two and a half minutes in. I love seeing people um, go out of their comfort zone. Uh, I'm not familiar with Anthony King's work, but obviously he's into the floral uh, subjects here. And, um, you know, Anthony says that he mixes art and personal experiences and a lot of pop art. So I have a feeling that we're going to see a lot of color coming out of this canvas fairly soon. I think so too. And I'm interested to see the way that he plays with color around all of this super careful line work. Uh, I feel like there could potentially be the risk of blowing out some of these gorgeous, super tight lines that he's got going on. But uh, Anthony has actually been it in our battle San Francisco, I believe, a few times. Oh, man. He's definitely uh, got his battle strategy down. Love it. I love the determination on his face right now as well, and the concentration. Really, really uh, is intense. You know, and oh, we yeah. have right now, we have uh, 16 minutes and 18 seconds left um so he's got he's got plenty of time to uh really really make this painting pop yeah the intensity that he's got while he's uh creating these lines and love it I love this little like artist pro tip of uh him using his pinky to balance and oh uh, yeah support his hand while he's creating these lines it's just really giving him a lot of control definitely Almost uh, like reminiscent of like a Sailor Jerry kind of tattoo style. Oh yeah, I can definitely see that. Yeah, I love that he's just kind of blowing with it and letting it, um, you know, letting it kind of come out on the canvas as it comes. So, all right, and we are going back to Michelle here. Michelle is starting to come up with a subject. It looks to me like a wine glass or something. I have to agree with you there. And already just checking out the way that she's creating some of these like little shapes in the bottom of uh, the stem of the glass. But she's really capturing the way that light is reflecting within the glass uh, really well already. Yeah, and the way that she set up her background here, it looks to me like maybe the wine glass is going to be emitting the light from uh from the canvas there and the rest of the canvas is darker um so yeah so i'm excited to see how it all comes together oh she's starting to add some color now 
And yeah, so I'm excited to see where that goes. Oh man, Rick. Rick is, he's going. This he's is looking his thing. so sick already. Would you say snake skull? Snake skull, that's exactly what I was thinking. Man, you know, yeah. and I recently talked to Rick and he told me that he has been practicing his his uh, strategy here. So it shows he's getting there. He, I mean, wow. he's covered his entire canvas right now in paint. Well, I gotta say, I, I believe it that he's been practicing because we're uh, just seven minutes in at this point. And uh, already this piece is looking amazing and I'm just really enjoying watching the way he holds his brush there's yeah. he's allowing for this really beautiful organic kind of drag in his brush strokes yeah i love that wow look at anna's piece this, this looks is so cool. this is really really coming together i'm really enjoying how textural this is yeah people who use um palette knives like that they can really really like add a lot of that texture and glob on some of that paint and spread it around and um that i know from personal experience that that is really really fun a fun way to paint and here we are with eric's son and uh this piece is looking really cool already we've got uh, lots of energy coming from the center skull starting to kind of go outwards yeah uh, I love that he is using several different reference images to create his skull from. And uh, also another one that's using uh, palette knives to add some of that texture to it. Yeah, I love the multi reference. That's so... That's, oh my oh gosh. Man. <laughs> Look at yeah, this. Man. This is so fun. <laughs> so this is Kathy Schopner. And uh, a fun fact about Kathy is that she actually has worked for Disney as a background artist before. And uh, if anyone's familiar with uh, the backgrounds in Disney, they are. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of the fun thing about hosting um, Art Battle in Los Angeles is there are these artists who have worked for giant companies and stuff. So when I go around and I end up meeting some of these artists, you know, they end up, um, yeah, some of them work for Disney or some of them work for Pixar. And so the level of talent coming out of Los Angeles, as far as art is concerned, is incredible. I'm so jazzed about this. So I'm eating my words right now, too, because uh, I, I was like, oh, I'm worried about the careful line work, but he's intentionally uh, smearing that it. He is, he is just destroying right now, right? Love it. And speaking Whoa. of destruction, love this. I, I wonder if we're wow. going to see a projectile that's coming uh, that has broken the glass. Oh my goodness! What a reveal here with this color. I know it's giving Kill Bill. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Uh, all right, back to Rick here got this crazy snake skull thing with his tongue jutting out yeah this is so strange and so cool <laughs> and the way that he's executing it is so expressive i'm just really enjoying the brushwork yeah rick's work generally is very expressive and there's a lot of movement and abstract qualities to it and for anybody who is watching at home, um, you do have the ability to vote, right, Morgan? Yes, we do. We are officially at the halfway mark of our first round of our battle in Los Angeles. And you can register to vote. Voting just opened uh, at artbattle.com slash AB2575. The link is at the bottom of your screen. So the top two artists and from this round and the top two artists from our next round We'll be moving forward into a four-way final showdown in the third round. So make sure that you get your votes in, choose your favorite artist. Uh, we still have just over nine minutes left on the clock for these guys to finish their pieces, but start thinking about who you're enjoying visually, but also whose performance you're digging and who you might want to see uh, paint again. 
And also, all of the works created tonight are available for silent auction at that same link that is on your screen. This Mr. Potato Head is everything to me. <laughs> the Mr. Potato Head, she's on the mustache right now. I am all for that. Honestly, though, I would have a really hard time voting um, on my top artists for the night because I like all these these paintings for different reasons. Wow, look at uh, look at this piece here by uh, Anthony. Yeah, it's really, 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 really incredible it's, with those colors. Right? It's it's totally taken on this dynamic quality. I, I was already really digging the cleanliness of the line work of the floral and like the design element of it, and then just totally brought it into a different direction. It's just so lively. Yeah. Yeah, and Michelle's piece here. She is still adding some detail to that explosion in the side of that wine glass. I'm excited to see where that goes as well. Me too. Um, some darker uh, line work being introduced here from Rick. Is that something that is present in his studio work? Um, yeah, but you know, he switches things up because he does some digital work as well. Um, and uh, but it always kind of has this kind of painterly quality to it with some abstract elements. So, um, so yeah, the line work looks like something that he is used to doing there too. Wow, this piece by Anna has just come together in such a wonderful way. There's so much expressiveness in the movement of the body. I'm really digging that one too. I really like the colors on that one. Um, our friend here, Eric, has chosen to not add any color. We only have seven and a half minutes left, and he has not introduced any color, which I don't think is a problem because the skull so far is looking pretty incredible and it has a lot of uh, movement and stuff to it. It kind of it looks like it looks like a playing card or something to me. It I looks was like just gonna say adding a brown i don't know yeah we're getting this like play on a a playing card a king of spades i think and cool. i love when we're watching these pieces being created having elements like that just kind of click and you're like oh that's what he's doing right yeah the reveal i think that comes into play with the the whole performance aspect of this entire competition and some of the um, the fun challenges that the artists actually get to um, go through when they're coming up with the concept for their paintings. Yeah, the uh, trying to balance the actual creation of the painting and uh, the performative aspect as well. Right. Again, this Mr. Potato Head is killing me. I love it. I love, I, how could you not smile when you're looking at that, you know? Right? I love that it's it's such a it's a childlike cartoony character, but she's executing it in this very painterly way. Oh, like, totally. A really involved, like brush strokey, underpainted uh, way. And it's just it's creating a juxtaposition that I'm really digging. Yeah, I, I'm I'm loving that. And it's kind of looking like it's, you know, hanging out in the uh, in the L.A. sun right now. Uh, the, the, the weather here has been so hot. The sun has been intense. So it's very fitting for L.A. I'm so all about this. Like, this feels very ready to be an album artwork. Like, it feels yeah. very good to me. His style here, this whole downward motion of the entire piece is awesome i love it and he's so rhythmic in the way that he's painting it too like there's just been from start to finish this level of concentration and like he's really in a conversation with this piece absolutely yeah there's there's a mood to this for sure wow yeah that level of determination and concentration on his face still we have a little less than five minutes left. We're three quarters of the way through the first round here. And Michelle is still going at it and adding some more details to this wine glass that is exploding into the void. And I'm yeah, loving it. Yeah, that's 
thing that we haven't chatted about yet uh, with this piece is this very interesting use of shadow and like really bringing um, like a space kind of quality to it. Yeah. Oh, 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 love the technique there. Yeah. The flatter. There's many different ways that you could do this, but she has chosen to use her whole body here. I know you can flatter see. it on with her fingers. I love it. Ah, uh, talk about performance. <laughs> All right, back to Rick's here. He's adding some more details. He he is going in and he's blending some of these colors and he's bringing it all together with these these sharp teeth of this weird creature that he's got going on. And we've got a couple of uh, inky drips happening too, which just kind of underlies uh, some of the creepy energy that's happening here. Yes. Yeah, I'm totally into the, the, the creepy drips. Ooh, yes. Give me some of those highlights. The, uh, I like. The, sorry, go for it. Oh uh, no, I was just gonna say some of these dark greens down below um, are just kind of swallowing the bottom of this creature here. I really like how he did that part there. Yeah, a really nice choice because it kind of establishes the the creatures in an environment without having to right. actually execute an environment. Love that. Wow, this is really really still coming together. She has gotten rid of her reference or it's fallen down, but she's still going. She's just going for it and I adding my, in all of those little details. I think my favorite thing about this piece by Anna um, was actually seeing the reference versus how loose she's painting. And it's right. really cool to get the opportunity to see the way that an artist's brain kind of translates their reference into their own style. And Anna definitely filtered it through uh, just so much expressiveness. Definitely. And the, the color choices versus the original reference as well. Uh, we have a little bit over two minutes left. That's it for this round. Ooh, nice. Erickson. Well, I'm so jazzed on this uh, little pop of color here. Whoa, I think he's signing it. I think he's done. Before yeah. the time has run out. Wow. We like to call that a brush drop. <laughs> like a mic drop when an artist yeah. uh, finishes early in the round. Just like, yeah, like falling. Cool, I think he's, because he's got a little bit more time left, he's just adding a few little extra details. But yeah, that is a really cool playing card. I'd love to see an entire deck of this style of art. Oh, for sure. That would be so cool. Ooh, one minute left and we've got an arm to execute here on our Mr. Potato Head. Will she do it, folks? I have all the faith in the world for her. Is Mr. Potato Head doing a, a hand sign too? Is he? Is Mr. Potato Head uh, thrown up gang signs? I don't know. <laughs> kind of looks like it. <laughs> Either that, or he's like got uh, some metal horns going. Yeah, loving this. Uh, absolutely <laughs> loving this, and especially the way that she's created the shadow uh, underneath the eyes to show oh, the yeah. roundness of it and nose too. Yeah, this whole painting shows a lot of skill. You know, years of skill within a, a 20 minute time frame is awesome. Oh, oh, that's it. Okay, our timer is a little tiny bit off on screen, but looks like the, the round is over. All the brushes are down. Incredible. And is now open at artbattle.com slash AD2575. The link that is on your screen you get to vote for your favorite artist within this round and our top two artists as voted by the audience will be moving on to the final. So think about who you want to see paint again. Uh, Shane, any thoughts from your first round during commentary for uh, Art Battle LA? Well, right, yes, this is my first time 
<laughs> uh, co-hosting the live stream here for Art Battle. Uh, and I mean, I'm just really excited to see all the different styles and everything and seeing how people approach it because there are so many different ways that you could actually do um, the painting here from the beginning and um, and that really determines how the rest of the painting is going to go so to see all of this coming together is really really cool from these artists so yeah and i'm excited about just the the energy that they're all bringing in the concentration and everything um, and the level of detail uh, has been really awesome and and also you uh hosting with me is super fun so thank you thanks for bringing me in mark <laughs> back at you <laughs> Uh, I gotta say, some favorite moments for me, I would say, are this Mr. Potato Head. So excellent. I'm uh, loving it. I really, really love this piece. I uh, might be, might potentially even get my boat. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, if you guys are hanging out on the live stream with us on YouTube, we would love to hear from you in the comments about which pieces you loved this round. Uh, and of course, your job is not over yet, so make sure that you head over to the link on your screen and cast your vote. We will be back for round number two in just a few minutes with another six artists stepping up to the easels with another 20 minutes on the clock.
psychedelic underground, excuse me. His name is Dylan Thomas! <laughs> On station five, we have a kinetic expressionist painter from Inglewood, California. You can follow her on IG at All Natural Ingredient. That is a singular. Her name is Shalandria Houchin. Art Battle in LA. We are here for our second round. We have six incredible artists up at the easels ready to dazzle you in only 20 minutes. My name is Morgan Booth and I am here with Shane Isaacowski, a local dark artist from there and host of the Drawing from Experience podcast. Hey Shane. Thanks for having a little bit of trouble with Shane's audio right now, but he will be joining us as soon as he can. Uh, and right now, I think that we are with Tony, if I'm not mistaken. And I can see that we're already off to um, start a portrait. We've got some line work happening, forming some shoulders at this point. It uh, looks like this is very influenced by Roman sculpture as well, which is always interesting. I uh, am such a sucker for an art historical reference. Over here now with Shalandria Huchin, uh, who describes herself as a kinetic expressionist, which is pretty incredible. Uh, really, really excited to see what Shalandria brings to the easel in terms of performance, because uh, just the description, kinetic expressionist, is so incredibly interesting to me already, and really looking forward to seeing how that plays out. Right now we can see that she's very physically uh, involved with the piece and is just seeming to be almost like dancing within the composition. So very, very cool. Uh, off to a very interesting start already with Calandria. Here we are with Dylan Thomas Brooks, and uh, he is an artist that I was absolutely so excited to see stepping up to the easel tonight. Uh, he has this incredible, really psychedelic, uh, dreamscape kind of style of work, and it's difficult to describe, but we will just have to watch it unfold as the timer takes down. Here we are with Kay Peaks. And uh, Kay is an artist who creates really character based work uh, with a very distinct style. I won't necessarily reveal her major visual components yet as we see them unfold.
I'm really getting into some angular drawing here as well. And here we are with Jeremy Lebeed, who uh, is an artist that loves to create robots, monsters, uh, and really is interested in creating works that have kind of this dark tone, but there's also, uh, I think, elements of playfulness within their work as well. And we can see that they are layering on all of this gorgeous emerald green hue over top of uh, this piece right now and just really enjoying the way that all of these super strong brush strokes are converging into the middle of the canvas towards our main kind of central character. And I think that that is uh, maybe some sort of robot monster hybrid kind of character. And here we are with Anna Karina Hurtado, uh, who is a Mexican-American artist whose work is very illustrated, uh, quite often character-driven as well, and uh, really dynamic, featuring a lot of movement. And I think that we're already starting to see that emerging here from Anna Karina. This uh, really seeing a lot of movement, movement within this singular color and then I think the beginnings of the character maybe kind of swirling towards that uh, little yellow or little white orb there. We are at 14 and a half minutes. We have just over five minutes elapsed in this round. And once again, these artists have a total of 20 minutes on the clock to go from blank canvas to incredible masterpiece right in front of your eyes. If you're joining us for the first time, Art Battle is live competitive painting. And these artists are competing for your votes. So if you haven't already, make sure that you go to the link at the bottom of your screen, artbattle.com slash AB2575 and register your member to vote so that when the when the round ends, you can choose your favorite artist. Here we are back with Tony. And uh, Tony's piece is taking on a really interesting emotional quality with the way that these blues are coming into play and the extension of the painting uh, featuring this smaller figure in the background um, and I think a house in the background as well. back with Shalandria here and he is just continuing to be really physically involved with this piece. Very, very performative. Uh, really embracing the body relationship to the piece. Uh, getting his fingers in there even, like we're seeing right now, establishing some texture here. And this piece is quite abstracted, but I do think that we have potentially uh, one eye or maybe even a pair of eyes kind of uh, beginning to emerge within this piece. Back with Dylan Thomas Brooks and the way that this piece is coming together is just so gorgeous. Uh, we have all of these really wonderful gradient strokes happening within the canvas and uh, it's just it's stunning to take a look at and really there's so much softness within the color transitions here but still we have quite a fair amount of texture within the brush strokes and so that can be something that's really difficult to achieve at the same time with the softness in the way that the colors are stepping between each other, but also still maintaining the texture of the brush strokes. Jane, I hear you. I think that you are back now. Uh, uh yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Here we are with Kay Keith, uh, who has established her main character figure. And this is really cool. We're definitely delving into the surreal here. 
Wow, okay, sorry, I'm just getting back on track here. My sincerest apologies. No worries. Look I like at the these colors. Yeah, I like the way that she's painting over the drawing. Right, I love that technique. And that we have really so many cool character elements within that piece as well. And speaking of cool character elements, uh, Jeremy. Jeremy. Jeremy is a friend of mine. Jeremy does robots, monsters, and strange locales, usually, and uh, and actually usually works just in black and white with ink. So to see them painting with this intense green color is really exciting for me. So really, really cool piece here. Yeah, the vibrancy of this emerald green against uh, the more muted tones of his character just kind of it brings a really interesting uh, emotional quality here. Definitely. And I really like, yeah, I'm really digging the technique that's going on here. Again, usually seeing Jeremy working in pen and ink and to see them layering these, these colors and stuff over top is really, really cool. And here we are with Anna Kuna Hurtado. Uh, his work is often very character driven and featuring a lot of movement. And I really like seeing this kind of graphic illustrative approach that features this kind of dynamic movement. Yeah, and what's interesting about Anna is Anna is a, uh, a designer and um, generally is portraying dreams, reality, and uh, Mexican culture. And um, and you can kind of see some of that in this in this piece that she's putting together. And I really like that uh, whatever that blue that she that grayish blue that she added in there is is a really cool color. Yeah, definitely. And uh, when you're describing that she's uh, influenced by dreams, that really gives me a lot of context for this piece because the character seems to be like falling into the environment. That's yeah, or like. floating or or something. Wow, Tony. this is cool. It's it's so lonely, but in such a good way. That's yeah, what I'm getting from it, at least. Yeah, it seems like some kind of isolation, or um, and this kind of monochromatic blue, grays, and whites here. It's a really interesting approach. I'm liking that it's like a nighttime scene. Yeah, the compositional elements from this piece are really interesting to me in that we have a lot of uh, tonal weight of the canvas up at the top with the dark night sky. Oh. And then our main figure is in the bottom uh, taking up space like very close to the bottom of the canvas. And then we have a secondary figure here. This is uh, just a really cool way to lay things out. Yeah, I like that he's he's working from a, a sketch there as well. Feels very narrative to me. Definitely. And we do, if we uh, creep in the background, we can see a few more colors on his palette. So I'm wondering whether or not he's going to bring in uh, more color or not. I'm okay, that. so here with what is Shalandra. And I don't think you were able to hear me before, but I had described, she describes herself as a kinetic expressionist. Nothing says expression more than stomping on your canvas. Right? <laughs> kinetic expression. This is so Oh cool. my gosh. I've seen artists that art paddle uh, do finger painting, but I don't think I've ever seen foot painting. Wow. Yeah, this is really something. I think that this Talking is going about, to be really engaging for the audience. I think that she's yeah. going to get a lot of points uh, oh, for performance. Oh, she's here. dancing. She's dancing on it. Yes. Amazing. Oh, she's sweating too. I love it. I love the involvement. <laughs> All right. Dylan Thomas Brooks with his signature colors. Wow. So excellent. So Shane, you know Dylan. Uh, yeah. How 
How would you say this art battle piece is relating back to what you're used to seeing from him? Oh my god. Well, again, his color palette is always this, like, these pastel -y sort of colors. And Dylan does do a lot of live painting during festivals and things like that. So this is exactly, precisely reminiscent um, of what he usually does. And this brush technique right here, that is something that he's, he's obviously mastered. Absolutely. I was uh, commenting earlier on just like, I, I'm so surprised and delighted with how soft the color transitions are when he still is able to keep so much like evident brush strokes. Like it's so textural, right. textural but it's so soft at the same time. Yeah, I'm really loving it. Oh, okay. Wow. All right. So last time we saw this piece, um, it looks like she is going in and really blocking in some of that color over top of that figure. Yeah, so much work has been done uh, since we last wow. around for Cake Peaks. And I uh, gotta say, a little bit biased. I like a uh, blue skin beauty. And here we are. <laughs> This is looking fantastic. I love the the strangeness of this figure holding an eyeball in place of the head. It's so cool. Oh, it's an eyeball. Okay. All right. Sorry, I'm just catching up here still. But yeah, it's uh, it's looking really cool. And that is part of her signature style, the uh, Cerulean uh, blue skin color. Um, and the bubble textures is generally what she's known for here. I love Back seeing to... the way an artist's uh, studio style translates up at the easel here. Right. And back to Jeremy. Yeah, Jeremy's uh, weird robotic creatures in these in these locations, strange places. Um, yeah, they are uh, bringing it all together, bringing some of those background elements into it. And Jeremy is a very intuitive painter. Um, and artists, so it's cool to kind of see their brain sort of uh, going and seeing that process in real time here. We have uh, about four minutes left on the clock for round two. And voting is open. Head over to the link at the bottom of your screen, artbattle.com slash AB2575, and you can get registered to cast your vote for your favorite artist in this round. Oh man, I'm just loving the super, super subtle highlights that they're doing here. This is just, oh, I'm loving it. Absolutely. There's, yeah. how, like, you would not think that executing um, a, like, robot creature in this emerald matrixy landscape could be subtle, but somehow they're doing it. Right. This, uh, it, it evokes some kind of panic or something in this. It looks like the robot is panicked to me. <laughs> Hopefully that's not how Jeremy's feeling right now. <laughs> this is just so oh, much wow. fun. Oh, cool. It's like this planetary. I wasn't really understanding the, um, the, the composition before, but now I'm, I'm kind of seeing that it is a, uh, looks like a planetary floating, figure or something yeah, to like me. Falling into space, falling into a dream. Yeah. And we can see that Anna now is also uh, adding in some of those white marks, which I think are just kind of helping to underline the like swirling vortex that the character is going into. Yeah, I think the dream world is something so interesting to explore especially in like a live event like this absolutely like digging into your psyche in front of a whole room of people it takes a brave artist to do that yeah i love that talking about that this piece getting heavier and heavier by the moment it looks like he is blocking in some of the shading right now i love this kind of classic quality to this figure that's in the front yeah it's definitely feeling referential to like roman sculpture absolutely yeah even like the head position itself mm -hmm. is very reminiscent of that 
and we have Kay has now uh, brought her canvas back up onto the easel. <laughs> I really want to, I really hope that we can still see some of the footprints. Right, the, the toe prints. <laughs> right? <laughs> this, is, this is really cool. It's, uh, there's a lot going on here and now she is adding in some fingerprints as well. Toe prints and fingerprints on one canvas. And I love that the fingerprints are just the very tips of her fingers and she's got right. them like lined up. It's feeling so rhythmic and you can see her like really in this energy exchange with the piece. Yeah, it's, it's hard for me to exactly see where it's going because she keeps introducing all these extra elements to it and all these different colors. Um, so we'll see where it ends up in less than a minute here. So in love. So in love. I feel like I could just stare at this piece for days. Yeah, it's got this peaceful harmony to it, which is honestly, that is Dylan in it's a so nutshell. <laughs> and I like, love that he's grooving. Uh, I feel like we're our time... Our countdown is imminent here, but I just love all of the gradients here. What a fantastic round. Quite Very the lineup cool. tonight. Uh, so many different styles. I'm just really taking in this piece by Jeremy. There's yeah, I feel like there's uh, some some robot world. I could see, I can kind of imagine the rest of where that robot is at. Same thing with uh, Anna here with this dreamscape. Love the intentional uh, muted tones of the entire piece there. Me too. She's really uh, playing with you in an interesting way there. And Tony, the emotional quality here. Like, I just, I'm just noticing our secondary figure here with a little balloon. Yeah, I was just looking at that as well. I'd love to know the full story of that piece there. And then Shalandra's piece, which was definitely, I think, um, a practice in performance painting, which is really cool. And I always enjoy seeing an artist get physical with their work. Absolutely. All right. Any uh, favorites from this round chain? Honestly, I got to go with my boy Dylan. The, that piece is it's so cohesive to me. Um, and again, like he, he's mastered his style. So he just has a way with um, like these geometric patterns. And honestly, like it's a peaceful piece of artwork. Yeah, it's so active, but it's so peaceful at the same time. That's such a great way uh, to describe it, that peacefulness. Yeah. Uh, another standout for me, I think, was Jeremy. Uh, the way that they, and you had said it, you would be able to kind of envision the world of that robot. And so to create a single character that elicits the response of being able to envision an entire world for that character is very impressive. Definitely. Yeah. And I, I feel like if you look at all of Jeremy's um, artwork, all of their characters belong in this kind of robot world as well. And so you can you can find these artists online if you go to the link. And um, and you can also find Art Battle Los Angeles on Instagram at Art Battle Los Angeles. And we have uh, tagged all of the artists. So make sure that once you have finished voting in this round that you head over there and give all your favorite artists a follow and support them in that way. And you can also support them in the auction tonight because all of the works created are available for silent auction and you can bid on them at that same link at the bottom of your screen, artbattle.com slash ev 2575 And you don't need to be in the room to take one of these people home. We will ship them to you. All right, our top two artists 
from round number one and our top two artists from round number two will be announced shortly as the votes come in. So be sure to stay tuned as we announce our finalists in just a few minutes. Kane and I will be back to comment for round number three very shortly.
That's why I keep stopping. That's why I have to keep stopping and like watch people do stuff. Yeah. Yeah, we need a new canvas. We need a new canvas. We, we have an extra canvas. canvas. What? Do you have an extra canvas? So that's it? I don't, I don't know. Shit, she got paint on hers. All right, our finalists have been announced for our third and final round of Art Battle in Los Angeles tonight. Moving forward into the final are Michelle Doe and Anna Sutton from round number one. Michelle had the exploding wine gra glass piece, which was very cool. Uh, Anna had the super expressive, very textural, figurative uh, backbend painting. And from round number two, moving forward, Anna Karina Hurtado, who had the really very interesting and dynamic, uh, almost dreamscape uh, piece, and Jeremy Labib, who had created the wonderful robotic character on the field of emerald green. So we will be seeing these artists stepping up to the easels once again with 20 minutes on the clock in just about three minutes. They're just readying their canvases right now and uh, get ready to see our final.
And here we are in our final round, our third and final round of our battle in Los Angeles tonight. We are here with our finalists, Michelle, Anna, Anna, and Jeremy. I uh, cannot wait to see you with the Artist Springs Council a second time. I am here with my co-host, Shane Isaacowski. Uh, hey Shane, how's it going? How are you enjoying uh, streaming for the first time? Hey Morgan, how are you? Uh, I'm having a great time. It's cool to see, you know, at the beginning of these rounds, again, how how these artists are tackling um, the process, you know, how to actually begin the paintings. And, um, and just watching these artists just like be concentrated in whatever their process is, is really interesting. Um, and it looks like Jeremy Labib is going in with their signature style of these kind of robot creatures um, and and going in with the monochromatic look uh, to kind of sketch in the figure. When I think that I'm seeing maybe a little bit of a suit jacket there. Potentially. Ooh. Yeah. On. Wow. Uh, this piece is already beginning to match the artist's uh, outfit. <laughs> love it, love it. Uh, and love seeing Michelle uh, going into this very colorful palette, whereas her previous piece was quite monochromatic with that singular pop of color. I think that we're right. going to be seeing Michelle's full breadth of uh, color usage this time around. Yeah, loving that. I'm loving seeing the, the blending of these colors together looks like there's going to be some kind of a gradient moving downward maybe a sky Ooh, yeah i would love uh, to see a really UV sky for myself mm -hmm. over with anna sutton and anna is going in with some knife work this time right off the bat right and uh I'm liking the, the movement on this piece already. It's kind of like this wind or this wave pattern going upwards. And and also like a lot of colors already laid down on the canvas. And we're only about three minutes into the competition. I'm really enjoying watching how carefully she's placing. Like we're really getting a, a sense of her decision making right now as she's Optimally placing the stroke. Like it feels very abstract, but she knows where she's going and she's planning and mapping it out. And I love seeing how artists work. Right. And so this piece here, beginning again monochromatically with this kind of uh, beigey, tan, kind of warm color. And there, I, I'm trying to figure out exactly what's happening in those. Uh, the empty spaces, the white spaces, but I'm sure that's going to start coming together within the next few minutes. Ooh, super vibrant red being introduced here. Yeah, that's really intense on top of that other color. It feels animal, like it feels animalistic. Right. Like, uh, looks like, I don't know, right now, it looks like a dragon or something to me is coming out of that or some kind of a creature for sure. I think that this one is going to be a really fun one to watch evolve and come together. Right. Okay, Jeremy is, wow, going strong here. Introducing a lot of color right off the bat. And again, that kind of bright green background, bringing it back into that robot world. Yeah, I like that. It, I feel like that's going to be the harmonizing element between Jeremy's first round qualifying piece and this piece. That and uh, similar character, but it's it's again, it's this continuation of this world that they've created. Yeah, and. Uh, I'm getting all kinds of like, all kinds of different elements as far as what kind of creature this is. There's almost like a, a squid-like or a Cthulhu type 
uh, mouth or something developing there. So totally. Ooh, I didn't expect a sea foam as the next component of this grade. Me neither. And you can see Michelle is going in with this super uh, small area of sponge right now. Yeah, it's always really interesting to see the different tools that artists are using to create their work. You know, I'm curious, uh, again, I'd, I don't know, I'm not very familiar with Michelle's work, but I don't know if that's something they typically use as far as a tool goes, but I'm starting to see maybe some cloud elements being introduced here. I feel like we're getting our wish here with uh, hoping that this gradient was going to be a sky and yeah. all these fluffy clouds are just making all of all of our dreams come true. Love it. All right. Wow. Okay, texture. So there is another angelic sort of creature um, coming out of this piece here. Looks like another reference image that's similar to the, the first round. You know what? Um, I feel like it might be the same reference image. He's just oriented it differently to imagine a new piece. No way. I did not expect that. Oh my gosh. Look at the way that she's doing the feathers of the wings. It's incredible. Very fun. Yeah, really, really lo loving that. Loving that technique, especially live. Some, you know, using using your fingers uh, to create some of the work. Wow. Toes. Okay. Yeah, or toes even. <laughs> All right. I'm seeing. <laughs> I don't know what I'm seeing. I, I feel like like a horse's tail yeah or something <laughs> oh my gosh i'm having so much joy watching this creature be revealed and i think you're right i think it is a horse and i think uh the pose of the horse is what was throwing us off so we're right. getting it back to you maybe it's like a pokemon or something yes like a horse <laughs> Slash yeah. uh, Evie. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love this. It's so, there's something that's really delightful about Anna's work. Right. All right, back to Jeremy here with this robot creature. Uh, really working out the face here and trying to give it some personality. Yeah, the shape of the head, um, I'm definitely seeing what you're talking about, getting that kind of cephalopod vibe. Mm -hmm. And I'm also really interested in uh, this closing component here. Right. right. With those extra colors, um, they made sure that they blocked that in very early on, so we'll probably see some layering over top of that definitely some kind of collar like a robot uh I, you know i don't know it looks like a very fashionable robot yeah and it just kind of like underlines the personification that he's bringing to these robotic characters right wow look at the sky with those green tones that unexpected sea foam yeah. color being introduced into the top of the sky there has really, really brought it, just that part of the canvas together. So I'm curious to see what the rest of the canvas is gonna start looking like within the next few minutes. Yeah, there's this radiance that she's been able to capture uh, through the use of that sea foam. That sea foam is doing a lot of heavy lifting in this piece. It definitely is. All right, back to the palette knife and some of that motion again with those wings. And that figure is just, uh, I'm, I'm really liking the process of this piece here. Me too, this side, uh, we're really getting a lot of the intent of this piece in the process and 
and there's like an emotionality to the, the way that Anna is applying all of these strokes. There's also, um, she seems really chill, very patient while she's creating this as well. Very true. All right, now we're now we're seeing some of the maybe foreground elements or some of the actual landscape aside from the sky in Michelle's piece, looking like maybe buildings or or something there in the foreground. Yeah, it's very uh, like ethereal the way that these buildings that are starting to come into view are very uh, almost transparent uh, wow okay so creature this uh this horse horse creature with a long tail it's starting to come together uh she's introducing some other colors now into this which i, I love feel it like, so yeah much. it's bringing out some of these details in this tail already this and, is one of my favorite pieces of the night <laughs> uh just there's such a playfulness in the way that he elongates shapes yeah it looks like she's blocking in her shadows right now and the horizon line too with uh the kind of desert rocky cliffscape there is yeah really, she's so subtle in the way that she's put that in but it's really uh, coming across well yeah that's what i love about art you can just add in a few little things and the viewer knows exactly what they're going for yeah a great artist has the ability to suggest right jeremy is speeding up they're pro they're they're going you can feel the energy coming off of them right now. They're adding in some extra tones in the background. They have about seven and a half minutes left to finish up this this robot creature. I'm getting all kinds of interesting vibes off of this. Maybe like it's almost looking like a mohawk or something with this cool suit. Yeah, I'm loving the addition of that cerulean blue next to the orange of the jacket. Yeah. And I also am really, really liking, uh, my favorite part right now is the lighter shoulder. The back shoulder is just a little bit lighter, and so you're getting like this highlight skipping off of it, and it creates this little pop of color focus. Wow, and Michelle's piece, uh going extremely bold with these foreground elements it looks like it does look like a cityscape that's happening and some of these buildings that are maybe in shadow it feels like we as the viewer are sitting on a rooftop and this right. is our view very cool i'm still really really loving that sky yeah, this piece is feeling very immersive. Uh, with the introduction of this super contrasted uh, foreground building element, it really puts you in the environment because she's playing so much with scale and distance there. Yeah, and those are some really, really bold moves there. Talking about bold moves, got these really intense colors. That red is just popping. And it really look, looks like that, that angel is uh, flying off the canvas there. Yeah, there's such a wonderful sense of movement here. And uh, the face of our angel being thrown back, you really, uh, it almost looks like a motion blur. It looks like Anna is signing her name. And if she actually puts her brush down, then we're gonna have the first true brush drop of the evening. Nice. Yeah, she's still got some time to add some extra elements to it. She's got a, a, a chunk of time, over five minutes. Yeah, our last, our final quarter. And 
I always say that the final quarter is the riskiest time within a round because at this point the artists are uh, they're feeling the time crunch and so there's the potential to make uh, rash decisions that could uh, throw a piece off. So it's really, this is the toughest part of the competition, I would say. So it looks like Anna here is adding some, some highlights to the creature, which again, still looks like a horse kind of creature with this long tail to me. I love it so much. And I want to ask in an after show what the horse's name is because I feel very connected to this piece. Like, I love this piece. I love the whole visual language that she's using. It's, uh, it's so true to her studio style. And I'm, I'm, I really love the contrast of everybody's style here mm -hmm. as well. Um, it seems to me that because Jeremy got a lot of their details blocked in right at the beginning, now they can go in and really concentrate on bringing the entire piece together, which it looks like they're doing. Yeah, I think Jeremy did a lot of really careful time management within this round, and yes. that just really paid off for them. Wow. Oh, I love this. I love this frantic painting here. Right? This is, uh, yeah, you can just feel that energy. It really uh, keeps us as the crowd invested. You know, when you see the artist in the last few minutes starting to go really fast, you just root for them that much harder. All right. Let's see where the cityscape is going. Whoa, there is a figure. What? Wow. No way. That is really, that sold the entire thing for me. I, what a curveball. Wow. Michelle did not come to play tonight. Definitely not. Wow, so. All right, connecting this line over to these power lines over here. Very cool. What a what a what a bold move. And the the transparency of the smaller buildings in the background contrasted yeah. with the like super dark black uh, silhouette is just really fun. Right. And then this the, the looseness and the motion on this piece with this angelic creature oh yeah Re really really loving this one and the, the intense colors that yellow is insane like um like leaping into or out of fire or something and then the contrast of the blue against those super warm colors is really satisfying as well absolutely and I really am enjoying the suggestion of the features. Yeah. Yeah, that's really, they're, they're really, really good at, at doing that. All right, so we have a little bit over a minute left. And it looks like Anna is using a Posca marker or some kind of acrylic marker right now to add in some of those extra elements. She's holding on to the bottom of the canvas for dear life. Yeah, we can see that her uh, easel looks like it might have uh, blown a leg. And so she's really in battle right now. Easel <laughs> yeah. and easel stuff. She's, she's making it work though. The composition of this piece is so cool too. The way that uh, she kept so much of the action over to one side, but then harmonized it by uh, having the tail come back into frame. Right, and you kind of want to know what they're looking at over there off the side of the canvas. It kind of, to me, it looks like they're at, they're, they're, they're about to battle something, like they're at a standoff mm -hmm. with someone else. All right, getting into our final few seconds here, almost at our countdown. And wow. Open at artbattle.com slash AB2575. 
Yeah, please make sure you go and vote. Cast your vote for one of these incredible artists. That is the end of round three. For Art Battle Los Angeles. Uh, what a comeback. So uh, pleased to have been able to witness all of these incredible pieces tonight. Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, this is really cool to see all the talent coming together, all of the energy in that room. Um, these artists really, really brought their A game tonight. And I'm super pleased. Yeah, everybody really, really brought it and really brought, I think, a lot of uh, authenticity to the people as well. Everybody was uh, staying quite true to their studio style and really bringing themselves, uh, which is something that I always appreciate. And we have to thank all of 12 of our amazing artists who came with us tonight. It takes a lot of creativity and courage to step up to be themselves. Yeah. And, um,. There's a good chance if you are watching at home that there is an art battle that happens near you because art battle happens all over the world, which is very exciting. So you can go to artbattle.com slash artist and register to be an artist and compete just like these guys did tonight. Oh man, so much goodness and oh only one artist will be crowned the winner tonight. Uh, who will it be? Will it be uh, Michelle, that incredible, immersive uh, rooftop landscape? Will it be Anna Sutton with her super expressive figurative angel? Uh, Anna Karina Hurtado with horse looking into the desert? Or Jeremy Lebeb with their robot character but uh, it is a nail biter i think Shane, this is gonna be a tough call i definitely agree because they're all i mean they're so different all four of those pieces are incredibly different and i think you know in addition to just the performance itself there's just personal taste of what kind of artwork that you actually like and that you can see on your wall um because you can actually take all of these paintings home tonight you can bid on these online or if you are present at the event you can actually bid on them in person as well and if you're watching with us on the stream uh, and you win one of these pieces we will ship them to you uh, very convenient i love and, that i yeah oh go and, ahead sorry and it really uh, helps to support the event itself but also supporting the artists uh, and it's just a great way to get into art collecting and to also have a memory of having witnessed that piece come alive absolutely um also a quick shout out to since we have this view of the dj right here this is madison orange who is a local la dj who she is part of boss angeles djs and there's a duo happening tonight with uh, Madison and also Lou E. Bagels, um, who are two local badasses in the music and DJ scene. So big shout out to them. Yeah, the music tonight has been uh, phenomenal and has been really great at creating a creative energy for us. All right, we have the boats rolling in. But if you have been watching at home and you have yet to vote, make sure that you head over to the link at the bottom of your screen, artbattle.com slash AB2575. If you have to vote, because voting is really close very, very shortly. All right, we'll be back with our winner announcement in just a few minutes. Okay, muted. Okay. Cool, well, this is fun. Thanks for doing this whole shebang with me. Of course. I, uh, I hope that you have enjoyed it. You've been really great. Aw, thank you. Um, yeah, it's yeah. like, uh, it, it's interesting because there's times when I'm just like viewing and then my mm -hmm. mind, my brain just goes blank. 
because I'm just like trying to watch too, and I'm like, oh, that's right, I'm also commenting. <laughs> I have a <laughs> like, screen yes. all the time. And if I'm silent for too long, I'll just be like, wow, uh -huh. I just got absorbed. <laughs> yeah. Like it, it happens, uh, and I'll often find that my neck hurts at the end because I'll be turning my head sideways to like oh. get different views of the piece. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Uh, Seeing all this stuff up close, because even when you're at Art Battle, uh, you don't get this level of detail. Yeah. Alrighty, both rolling in. I wonder who it's gonna be. I think uh, I think it's between Michelle and Jeremy, but I would be surprised if Michelle. Oh.
just in one city. Oh, no, no, Hi, everyone. If you are still watching with us on the stream, we have the winner announcement coming up very shortly. We are going to bring our camera into the other room and hopefully catch that announcement on the mic uh, for one singular lucky artist. And again, the winner of tonight's event for Art Battle in Los Angeles will be moving forward into the regional final yeah. taking place next year. So high speaks tonight. Stay tuned for our winner announcement.
buying their art and supporting them, following them on Instagram, finding them, finding their websites. A reminder that all of the art created tonight is available in our auction, our silent auction. So if you haven't got a piece yet, this is your opportunity to get something that is truly unique, that was just created before you in front of your very eyes. Thank you so much for coming tonight. As I mentioned, I am your host, Tara Ace. A huge congratulations to our winner of tonight, Michelle Doe. Michelle has been a previous finalist in Art Battle LA, and it's so amazing to see her take home the win tonight. We will be seeing Michelle at the regional final next year. So huge congratulations and a big thank you to the team on the ground, all 12 of our artists, and of course, my wonderful co-host tonight on the stream, Shane Isaacowski. If you are interested uh, in thank you. Out, uh, Shane's work, you can see his Instagram flashing on the screen right now at Shane Isaacowski or Isaacowski Artist. Thanks, Shane. Thank you so much, Morgan. This was so fun. Really cool to see Michelle uh, taking the win home tonight. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us on the stream. And our next event will be on the 19th in San Francisco. So we will be streaming that event. So be sure to tune in. 